All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Lalita Suhasni. I am a faculty at uh, Flame University in the area of journalism. So I teach um, journalism to undergraduate students as well as postgraduate students here at Flame University. Um, I'm happy to welcome you all to this session on journalism in the age of Instagram and Be Real. Um, so as we see how journalism has evolved across the country, um, I'd like to begin a little bit about my own journey. Um, I've had the opportunity to work in traditional media, which is print media, uh, where we read news in the more tangible form, in the form of newspapers and magazines. And um, I had the opportunity to see the transition of journalism from print to digital where uh, we were looking at our social media audiences and uh, not just print, but digital became a big part of um, the work that I did uh, in, in 2008, right? Um, so um, I'd like to throw open um, some questions to, the, um, to everyone who's joined here. Maybe you can type your... Uh, um, answers or raise your hand and you'll get a chance to speak if that's going to be possible. Uh, Mimansa, is that going to be possible for uh, those who are present here? Yes, ma'am. They can type in the chat box. All right. Excellent. So I'd like to know how is it that you get um, your news today? What is your source of news um, when you're looking for events that are happening in the country or across the world? Can anyone type that out? Those of you in the um, in the Zoom session today, all right. Uh, Raisi says uh, YouTube, okay. Instagram and friends also mint the app. That's great. Anyone else? Facebook, okay. Gaurav says Facebook. Social media says Sunny, okay. Um, if if when you're answering, if you can also be as specific as possible, you know, which which platform on social media, for instance. Like the others have said Instagram, Facebook. I'll wait for one more answer and then move on to what I have to say. Through news channels or news apps like Hindu, excellent. So I'm going to share screen. Yeah. Um, right. So Reuters, which is a news agency, they come out with a digital news report um, every year. Yeah. And that collates information from across the globe. And um, they talk about different uh, ways in which news is consumed across the world, what kind of audiences are looking for news in which uh, in on on which media and so on and so forth. It's a very um, comprehensive, detailed news report, and uh, it's available. You know, it's it's like it's a free download. Yeah. So in India, the, these were some of the statistics that were shared. 38% of the sample size that they interviewed for this for compiling this news report only 38% actually trust the news yeah 40% of um the people prefer to watch news online yeah because all of us know that video is um is a very very popular format we want to like more than even reading stuff online we want to actually um look at videos 39% fortunately still prefer to read, yeah? So I'd like to again ask a few questions. 
because that's what journalists do. And since I'm trained in journalism, this is, um, it's, it's just a habit. What do you look for online, right? You're looking at, uh, you're looking at Facebook, you're looking at, so uh, you're looking at Instagram, you're looking at YouTube. So when you're getting news from these social media platforms, what do you look for? And I'm not asking for the kind of news, but I'm asking for um, how do you know what you're getting is, um, and this is not a question for those who are looking at apps like Hindu and so on and so forth, but how do you know that what you're looking at is, is news that you can trust? Yeah, you can use the Q&A box to give me your answers. How do you know that, okay, this is new, this is actually the truth, this is really happening. So you're looking at YouTube. How do you know that? Yes, I'm waiting for answers. For those, I mean, you can, those who've answered before, whether it's Raizi or Gaurav or Sunny or Ria, you know, if you want to take and take over an answer again, please do so. Sometimes, okay. I ask around and if the story matches with what everyone says, then I somewhat trust the news, verified using different apps. Credible sources, excellent. Um, like Al Jazeera on Instagram or NDTV or the Hindu. By past news, they have covered the number, reputation of sources corrobor corroborating by going through different sources. I'm looking around. For more answers. All right, excellent. Most of you um, have answers that we are looking for, right? We're looking for credibility, yeah? Um, authenticity and facts. Now, some of you said that you're going by what was previously covered, right? Previously uh, shared by these organizations. Excellent. You So you are looking very, very closely at who has posted this information. Yeah. Is it some random going by your answers? I'm guessing that all of you are already um, on the right track somewhat. All of you are looking at um, genuine sources. And if you aren't, that's what we are supposed to be looking for. Uh, because anything can be posted on social media and shared without us um, understanding whether this is this is the truth or is it something that's manufactured? Is it misinformation? And uh, this happened a lot during the pandemic, right? Um, a lot of people were sharing information about COVID vaccines, about the virus itself, without actually checking where this news is coming from. Uh, which is how the whole term WhatsApp University also came up because nobody was verifying. It wasn't a doctor who was authenticating in this information. It wasn't like, say, a health or a science correspondent from a well-known news organization. It was random strangers just forwarding texts and videos. So who has posted this information? How reliable is the source? Is anyone corroborating the information? How was the information gathered? Yeah, and it's important to know how the information was gathered because you're holding whoever is spreading the news accountable, right? And where did you get this information from? Supposing you also get a forward, um, someone has shared an Insta story with you or someone has shared a link to a YouTube video, then you're going and looking at the channel. Whose channel is it? Is this NDTV? Okay, great. Is this something that sounds like, because there are a lot of fake news websites as well, right? Um, for instance, there's something called bbcpost.com, right? So these websites sound like they could be authentic because they're using names of other famous um, news organizations and attaching another word to it. 
and therefore trying to pass off as another credible source, which it's not. So then what do you do? You go and check the about us section on these websites, see who the journalists are, um, you know, where this organization is based and so on. So um, ensuring that on Twitter as well, some, some of you said that you look at Twitter for um, information. Now, is this tweet posted by a person who is looking constantly for controversy, who is looking to sort of um, just uh, create a sensation, who's looking to just gain more followings, right? Followers. I mean, does does this person have a vested interest, right? Um, it has this po has this person been posting genuine, authentic news cons regularly, yeah? Uh, and we've had uh, we've had uh, cases of um, stories being posted that are inauthentic videos that are being posted that, that are inauthentic, leading to a lot of harm, right? leading to sometimes lives being lost, which is why checking for credibility is the first step. When you're looking at news, when you're looking at journalism in this age of Instagram and uh, Be Real. Now, this brings us to the last uh, slide. Uh, we looked at how was the information gathered. Now, this brings us to tools and skills for a journalist, yeah? I think uh, there's something in the chat box. One second. All right. Tools and skills for a journalist. Um, and this is where I'm going to be sharing a bit about what we do at, at Flame. Yeah. What is it that we do um, with the journalism program, um, the BA degree at Flame? Um, we are... We're looking at these skills. We're looking at communication. We're looking at news gathering, verifying, distributing. Yeah. So what is it that um, students learn? They're learning how to interview others. How is it? What kind of questions you ask? How sensitive are you when you're asking different kinds of questions? Um, what question do you begin with? We have a session called um, the art of interviewing across various courses. Right. Um, in a course where we teach broadcast journal journalism, we're looking at how news is presented. News gathering, of course, is fundamental. Um, and this is something that is taught from year one. And uh, this is something that's uh, reiterated and reinforced across the other years, um, year two and year three. So how do you gather news? How are you verifying who your sources are? How are you building a network of sources? How are you fact checking, right? Um, and and this is the difference between what journalists do and what nowadays, of course, anyone with a phone is able to just distribute and disseminate information. And so what is the difference? A journalist is someone who is trained to fact check, who is trained to question everything that they are presented with, right? Um, until they end up with, an answer that is absolutely unbiased, that is um, completely founded in facts, right? Uh, and which is why multiple sources are tapped, a network is built to ensure that all the information, all the news that is going out is as authentic as possible, yeah? Now, like we looked at, um, the last slide we looked at dissemination, which looked at dis distribution of news. So the scope of journalism in India has completely changed because of um, social media, because of new media, because of the internet. And now, of course, um, while everybody is faced with artificial intelligence and uh, they're questioning the need for artificial intelligence, um, will will AI be able to write an entire news report and headlines and will AI be able to uh, present news? Will uh, journalists and reporters be replaced by uh, news bots? It's happened in, in China already where there are news bots reading um, news on a TV channel. But going by how it's been received and going by the number of errors that we see AI generate when it comes to or even the repetitiveness, yeah? Um, so the strength of AI lies elsewhere. 
not in creating emotionally compelling compelling content that's going to bring more audiences and bring like the numbers as far as audience is concerned to whether it's uh, news websites or whether it's for television channels ai is is not strong enough to replace journalists and reporters across the world what ai is definitely uh, very very powerful and uh, very very useful for is in data journalism so when you're crunching numbers yeah whether it's for an election report or whether it's for a big survey that you're doing um, whether it's to understand data released by national organizations like say ncrb the national crime records bureau you want to draw up charts you want to look at maps for data visualization ai is excellent yeah so there's no uh, fear of ai replacing um, human journalists and human intelligence um with the with the um, growth of new media there have also uh, been several other online news platforms so if you're skilled as a journalist if you're skilled in all of these things that, that we looked at previously communication news gathering verifying how to be um, a good fact checker right and how to understand your audience if you're skilled at distributing this news then you set up your own independent news platform right um you are building your own audience you because you you have all the tools you have all the skills um and you are ready to be independently disseminating this news via various social media channels yeah so the scope of journalism is not just traditional media while i believe that traditional media still offers a great foundation like when you learn by traditional media i mean legacy media like say the indian express or the times of india or like a da news daily um either their newspapers or their um digital editions they give you a great foundation when you go there you're learning the ropes you're um you're out on the field reporting every day right so which means you are you are uh, writing a story or writing a news report every day and that gives you great um practice great um sort of foundation before you branch out like everyone who's branched out and set up their own thing like fade souza for instance um she was with mirror now she was with um cnbc before she started her own independent platform be truth on um instagram the same holds true everyone knows uh barkhada she was with uh, ndtv before she set up her own uh, mojo tv so you need to learn the ropes and to learn the ropes you need to be able to practice journalism every day and there is no greater um, opportunity to do so than with traditional media yeah um so i'm open to having uh, discussions and i'm open to uh, now taking questions because that is how uh, i think um, we can we can understand what we really do at flame and uh, what what you want to know yeah so i'm thank you so much thank you so much professor lalita it was definitely a very enriching session and i'm sure students might have very interesting questions to ask so i request everyone if you have any questions you can put it in the q and a chat box and professor will be happy to answer those questions the q and a chat box is open for all and uh, this is where it begins as in now uh, it begins with asking questions Nimansa, if you if you see new questions come in, could sure, you please no. share? Sure. So, uh, there's a question. Do you think bias is inevitable in a field as delicate as journalism? Uh, no, bias is not inevitable. Um, one of the fundamental um uh, sort of principles of journalism is to be objective and unbiased. So, when you are reporting, you are just expected to present the facts, right? if you're writing an opinion piece if you're asked if you're invited 
on a television channel as a panelist because you're an expert, say, on economy, on international relations and so on, then you are biased, yeah? But otherwise, if you are the anchor of the show or if you are the presenter, you are not supposed to be biased. You're not allowed to be biased. I know that you might have seen a lot of uh, TV news channels where uh, the show hosts seem to be biased, but that is not um, that is not good journalism. Yeah. So it's not inevitable to answer your question. Thank you, Professor. Any other questions? So there's one more question that I see that asks, which journalism course in Flame covers war journalism and for how many months? War journalism. Right. Right. So um, you are trained in various aspects of reportage, right? Um, so war journalism is a specialization, is like a beat that you get to, even if you become a journalist, for instance, right? Um, you need to have either a BA in journalism or an MA in journalism. There is no uh, course anywhere in the world that has a specific segment on war journalism. While you will be taught how to cover um, sensitive events, um, there are specializations such as investigative journalism, political journalism, um, science and health and environmental journalism. War journalism is not a beat that is available uh, anywhere in the country, actually. Yeah. So the the idea of that being um, is that, say, in a newspaper or on a website, um, you start with reporting on any everything, anything and everything, and slowly you're building your network. You are not immediately uh, sent to the front lines and asked to cover a war. That will never happen. You will build your sources as a defense reporter, right? And maybe 10 years into the job, um, God forbid there's a war, you will be told, okay, um, maybe you're now ready to go cover it. Yeah? So. so there's one more question. Ria asks, how do we establish a network of sources? Right. So when you start off as a journalist, good question, Ria. When you start off as a journalist, um, you are helped by your editor. Yeah, you your editor will send you to press conferences. There will be press releases coming in. First, you identify, of course, what is it that you're really interested in. In the beginning, you will be asked to do everything. When I started off as a journalist, I was asked to cover everything from health to civic, um, the civic beat where I was covering the railways to education. Finally, I started pitching more and more story stories linked to music because that is what I was really sort of drawn to. And then they said, okay, you know, maybe this person, this journalist should be covering music, um, focused on music, right? So you you will be helped by your organization and based on your interest, you will start sort of talking to people, going to conferences, going to various events, and you will build your sources in that manner. All right. So I see two, three questions asking, how are we supposed to believe everything in this world where we see fake images and rumors being passed around? And how do we make sure that the information we obtain is accurate or correct? So. Right. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, that's a concern that all of us have. Um, journalists have them as well, uh, which is why uh, you're looking at who is posting this, right? What is the source? What is the root of this information? And there are fact-checking websites. Um, every organization, including the Times of India, has its own fact-checking um, uh, network, right? There are websites like Alt News. There are uh, websites that are constantly checking whether this news is fake or, uh, or genuine. So you also send it out to them and say that, you know, I want to be sure whether this is, uh, this is authentic or not. And of course, all of us know how to use um, the internet nowadays. We're looking at more than one um, news source. So if we see some information on one website, then we're going to go check Guardian. We're going to go check BBC. We're checking the Indian Express, Times of India, some of the PTI, Press Trust of India. We're checking what well-known journalists are saying, right? And nowadays, you can just tweet to them and say, hey, I saw this. Is this actually true? Right? And they are... Um, more than happy to tell you that it is or not. But otherwise, if you think that you're not going to get an answer from them immediately, check multiple sources. Yeah, Don't rely on one 
um, source of information. If you see something that sounds dodgy, and your generation is amazing at that, right? You are able to discern for yourselves whether this is true or not, yeah? Uh, and if it sounds even remotely doubtful, check other sources. Right. Thank you. Priya Darshini asks, with respect to independent media and its growth in the contemporary world right now, do you think there's a possibility of oversaturation of information to a point where it makes the audience desensitized to certain issues? Mm, I would think no, right? Uh, that oversaturation point has happened already. Now, we are oversaturated with cat videos, dog videos, fashion reels, all sorts of things. News, I don't think, will reach an oversaturation point because we really want to know and your all of us should want to know what is going on. That curiosity cannot die. There is no oversaturation. And um, I wouldn't link it to independent news media. You know, um, so I find that connection between independent news media and oversaturation of news um, I don't, I don't see that connection at all. Um, I would turn to whichever news media is giving me authentic news, facts, unbiased news, and go to them and rely on one or two sources. If you think that you're being, if you're being uh, given too much information or uh, you can't handle it, then go to two or three trusted sources. Yeah, then you're not going to be flooded with too much information. Yeah, I hope that answers your question, Pradarshini. Next question asks your views on investigative journalism and is it unsafe or risky for an individual to pursue that profession? No, I wouldn't think so. A lot of my uh, very dear friends um, are work, are uh, journalists across the country. Uh, again, it depends on what you're investigating, right? Um, so there are stories, if you follow some, uh, if you follow this uh, organization called the reporters collective yeah i'm just sharing on the webinar chat um so they have been doing in-depth news analysis um not just analysis in-depth investigative stories on various issues political um and otherwise um so they have come under the, the radar every news organization uh, they build their credibility by doing stories that question various things, right? That question industrialists, that question politics. This is why this is why journalism exists. Yeah. So I don't think it's risky. Um, I think journalists also have various news networks that they belong to that uh, support them. I am part of a news network for the network, uh, which is called the NWMI, a network of women in media in India. So you have enough support. You don't have to worry. Thank you. Could you also tell a bit more about campus placements related to journalism and what are the salary packages usually? Right, I was waiting for this package question. But uh, as far as campus placements are concerned, uh, so we've had our students uh, being placed at various organizations, including Film Companion, which is like a film website uh, that was founded by Anupama Chopra in uh, Mumbai. It's headquartered in Mumbai. Um, there were others who uh, worked at Mint, Mint Lounge. Uh, some others at um, Pari, which is People's Archive of Rural India. Um, others have also gone on to work with uh, an independent um, sports uh, network uh, that was recently started, um, Sports Kida. Um, so salary packages are competitive. Now you are, I, it is not like working at a bank where you're the vice president of a bank or even say you, you started as some manager. Like journalism, um, journalism salaries are very different from um, management salaries. Having said that, um, they are competitive. Uh, you will sort of be able to um, lead, lead, say, a decent life yeah you you're never going to be wanting for anything if that's what you ask you're never going to be like uh in a position where you think why did i take up journalist journalism i've been a journalist for 19 years and uh never have i questioned um my career choice um yeah so that i hope answers your question the next question is related to this one 
what sort of career opportunities and roles are available after you graduate right uh so when you finish journalism um you can start off as a reporter or a uh producer reporter would be at a website or a newspaper a uh, producer will be at a tv channel um there are also alternate uh, fields of uh, communication that are open to you uh after a few years in journalism some some uh, want to try public relations right so where where you you are on the other side where you're representing an agency or a corporate or a brand yeah so and you are sort of pitching your stories to journalists um there's also corporate communications where you are working in a corporate office and you are sort of um designing their entire communication that goes out to any media yeah um advertising is another area that's open to um journalism students because journalism again is founded in writing writing is one of the biggest skills that you pick up when you are doing journalism so copywriting um the creative side of advertising that's that's also open to you yeah mekla asks do you think political alignment can hamper the credibility of news no oh, 100% yeah excellent question mekla so like someone else asked if it's uh, biased then it's not news or journalism then it's just content yeah uh, and content anyone can do so definitely there should not be a political bias and a political bias comes in when there is a uh, ownership there is a stake right so if there is a political party that's invested in a particular news organization whether it's a newspaper or a tv channel or a website uh then there will be bias towards that particular party right it's just obvious similarly if there's a company that's invested in um say a particular website or a newspaper or a channel that organization cannot say anything against the company right anything that critiques that company so it's it's very very uh, pertinent that question mekla and uh, yes there will be bias and if there is political bias then it's not journalism as you talked in your presentation sandeep asked how is generative ai going to revolutionize journalism right um so human beings cannot uh, sort of uh, crunch the kind the volumes of data that ai can that is one of the biggest ways in which uh, ai is going to help journalists journalists and journal newsrooms across the world um, to create data visualizations to use data in a more powerful manner and to be able to then use it quickly right journalists used to spend uh weeks if not months sometimes trying to decode data that's being released by various think tanks or um national organizations now all of that is going to happen within minutes yeah so that's like a huge leap for um journalism thank you could you also explain the importance of journalism in the light of criminology Mm. so criminology mostly can be used again in investigative journalism and uh, uh criminology comes into place when you are working on um the crime beat um and while those who are studying journalism need not be trained in criminology it's it's more something that um the authorities and officials you deal with um they have a training in that so yeah i mean it it's helpful of course but I don't think you're expected to have a background in criminology. All right. Uh holding on to your previous question, one student asked, what can you do uh what can you do if there is political interference? How then you still obtain accurate news from the media? Right. So, is this question uh are you asking this question as someone who is the audience of the news or someone who's working in the organization? Audience then you immediately know that this is not a uh, unbiased news right then you can't sort of take that news at face value and believe it then you have to look at another news source for more mm. authentic information mm. right so for example um if there is a rally organized by a political party and no one attended the rally or maybe sort of 5000 people attended that rally and the news report says that 25000 people attended the rally um uh, then one you know that that news uh, could be false because that political party 
is backing this news organization in some way. Otherwise, why would they multiply the number by five and say 25,000 people? So, so then you know if something that that sounds inauthentic, then you need to look at who is invested in that particular organization, which is why the news is inauthentic. But to answer your question, if you see political interference and if you obviously that is reflected in the in the news reportage, then you look at another news source to get uh, um to get unbiased news. Sure. I don't see any more questions. Okay, so I, I see one more question now. What companies have been coming to select candidates pursuing this course, especially corporates? Right. So I don't think that question would be applicable to journalism because I think that's more like a management question. But uh, if you want to know from the journalism side of things, what companies have shown interest, the Times of India group is very, very interested that we send our students there to uh, whether it, placements, of course, they're open to placements, but uh, they're also interested in internships. And uh, very frequently, our students have interned at the Hindu and the Times, and they're very interested in um, taking our students in. But corporates, I mean, that would be for a management program. What has been one of the biggest hardships as a journalist, in your opinion? Uh, So in my career, I think uh, the only thing, and that of course came in uh, with, again, the internet is self-censorship because you're really wondering whether, can can I say this in this day and age or not? Is it okay to be able to mention something? Um, so journalists are cons constantly censoring themselves, right? Um, and I was, at one of the organizations where I worked, I we were told that, um, we cannot say anything um, that is that is personal and sort of reflects our leanings, whether it's political or otherwise, on our social media handles. So one would imagine that social media is your own personal space. You can say whatever you want, but uh, when you are when you are a journalist, then everyone looks up to you and they take your. Um, the same holds true for any other profession. I would imagine they. Um, they hold you in high regard and they don't want to be influenced by your opinion, even if it's on your personal uh, social media page. Yeah. So otherwise, I don't think I've had any hardships as such. Thank you so much, Professor. Are there Thank any you. other questions? If yes, you could please type it in the Q&A chat box. Mekla again asks, what can a journalist do in the face of a rigid audience who refuse to listen to what they have to say? Um, so you just present the facts, you just keep doing your job. Now, whether the audience is rigid or not, the thing is, more often than not, you are not, uh, fortunately, you don't have to face a live audience and you don't have to convince them that, okay, what I'm saying is the truth. That is not, your job is to, and your responsibility is to put the news out, which is unbiased, objective, and it's sort of the truth right? That is it. And you continue to do so. Now it's up to the audience to understand who is speaking the truth and who is not. Yeah. So yes. that, that is not your responsibility. You just share it on as many media as possible. You try to amplify it as much as possible. You try to be as truthful as possible. And when you're doing, and you're doing work, journalism is considered to be a service to society. So when you're doing work that is helpful to one community or one section to society and people see that the impact that you've made, the positive impact that you've made, they will be convinced. They will then be convinced. They will not then be so rigid. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor. I Thank think you. we're done with questions. Thank you so much, Professor, for taking your time out to answer these questions. I'm pretty sure these students are much more informed than they were before. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank it was you. Also, sorry, Mamata. It was also lovely talking to all of you. I had some excellent questions from all of you. Um, so thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending this session. I hope everyone has filled in the feedback form that I posted on the chat box. You will receive the letter of participation by next week. It was great having all of you here with us and see you in the next session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.